Joining me right now, the chairwoman of the Republican Party, the RNC, Ronna McDaniel, joins us. And we have, and first off, Ronna, always good to, to have you. We we were talking talking about how you would respond when we first played that Donna Brazil soundbite. You you handled that quite well. She was she was mad at you. She was mad at you all for uh, for basically blowing the cover on their strategy with regards to Bernie. <laughs> Welcome. Well, as, thanks, Dana, for having me. Yeah, we hit a nerve. Uh, we we uncovered her strategy. Of course, she's also a super delegate, so she's one of those who really wanted pr- to prevent Bernie from getting the nomination. And I think, you know, there was a deal made with Klobuchar and Buttigieg, and who knows if Warren was part of it for Super Tuesday. They had settled on Joe as the anti-Bernie candidate, and uh, they wanted to make sure that Bernie didn't get that to the convention where the superdelegates would prevent him from eventually getting the nomination. Yeah, yeah. And and they have they really don't have any way, I think, to counter the president's message. I mean, he had a good town hall last night. He's he's been in Nashville to look at the devastation from the tornadoes. Been has been the obviously the administration's been incredibly responsive. And here we already had more jobs that we've added just to our American economy. Uh, actually be above and beyond what the estimations were and it's March it's I mean these are this is all great news I I don't how how is the how is the Trump campaign how is the Republican Party how are they going to handle the different ways that Republic that Democrats are going to try to counter these successes I although I don't know honestly how Democrats are going to argue against a, a, a good economy I think the only thing that they're trying to uh, create is some sort of drama with regards to coronavirus, which is why we've seen the lies that the administration cut funding to CDC when, in fact, it actually was increased. How, how, what are you anticipating, and how is the GOP going to counter that? Well, I don't think there's anything the Democrats won't do to win this election. And you see them spiraling right now. They're melting down. It's started since the beginning of the year when Nancy Pelosi ripped up the State of the Union. You saw Chuck Schumer go after our Supreme Court justices. Uh, They are so angry and so upset that the president is doing good things for the American people. So at the RNC, we have to prepare for that because they're going to be on the ground and they do have energy and they're going to stoke fear and they're going to try and divide our country because that's how they win. Uh, And we're going to talk about the accomplishments that this president has put forward for the American people on deregulation, on more jobs, on wages up. And that's why we're already in 23 states. We're registering voters. We're getting our ground game ready. We've had the benefit of a head start as the Democrats press for that nomination. So we get to start these one-on-one conversations with voters and share with them the things that they don't hear on the mainstream media. Yeah, I, well, and and that's it's working because just I, I was just looking at the numbers here in Texas and turnout for the Republican primary that what the what the president ended up getting was a lot more than what we what we ended up seeing coming out for Democrats. Uh, looking at you mentioned Chuck Schumer and you brought up not just his response, but I also think of Nancy Pelosi ripping up uh, and and that was all obviously staged ripping up the. Uh, copies of the president's remarks at the State of the Union, Chuck Schumer in front of the Supreme Court. Typically, we have seen that kind of rhetoric from maybe perhaps lower tiered Democrats, maybe not those who are Senate Minority Leader, uh, maybe not those who are House Speaker. This, to me, do you think that that this is a new era in which now party leaders are parroting resistance kind of talking points? Yeah, I think the party leaders on the Democrat party are shameful and they are stoking division in this country they're trying to stoke fear Uh, let's not forget as they were running this impeachment hoax because they couldn't accept the results of 2016 the president's the one who said we're going to stop travel from china with this coronavirus and prevented it from spreading further the president's the one who said we should know who's coming in through our southern yeah. border and all our borders. And they said he was a racist for, for this. Reasons. Yeah. Yeah, and they said he was xenophobic and racist. I mean, everything the Democrat Party stands for right now is resist, obstruct, but also divide. And they use fear, and it's shameful for our country. And the president last night was so spot on when somebody said, you know, can you stop your Twitter? And he said, no, because I'm going to fight back. And that's what I'm going to do, because he's not going to let them continue to push this vitriol in this country And he was laughing, and he's fun, and he was fantastic, and the crowd responded. And by the way, the campaign didn't get to put that crowd in there. That was an organic crowd. And they were so supportive of this president because he's delivering for the American people, and the results will trump this nasty rhetoric and division and negative 
outlook that Democrats are putting forward for our country. Yeah, the the outlook that they're putting out there doesn't match what people are experiencing at home. It doesn't match what they're experiencing in their in their bank accounts either. And just the I, I wanted to, to to ask a little bit about just some of the coronavirus response. The president put together a task force. This was like what the beginning of January, I think. And the initial reporting on the task force that he had assembled was that, oh, well, let's let's look at all these people instead of looking at their merits. Let's look at what identity boxes are checked and let's make a story out of uh, a lack of our perceived uh, diversity, et cetera. When I mean, ultimately, you want to have the most qualified people, whoever they are on the task force. And then it's like now they, they it, it just seems as though the, the new narrative is, well, he hasn't done anything to respond to this. And this took the administration completely off guard. How difficult are you finding it to actually get the facts through to the American people? Because I feel like the American people, a lot of people have a lot of questions that the media is simply not providing answers to because they want to politicize this issue. Yeah, I do think at first the Democrats uh, seized on an opportunity to try and politicize this issue and, and stoke fear. And I think the president immediately starting these press conferences, appointing uh, the vice president and really communicating with the American people. The news networks had to take that. So putting Dr. Fauci up, making sure that questions are being answered and they're talking about things on a regular base, basis. The president's going to the CDC today and the fact that the president's out traveling and, mm. and he had a rally on Monday and he talked about still shaking hands, just trying to make sure that you calm the fears, give people the right information, wash your hands, be careful if you feel sick, stay home, all the things that you want to know that are important but also not to overreact. Um, and Democrats tried to make this a political issue once again, and I think that's really shameful. And, and if you really look at the origins of this, the president was in the lead saying, let's stop this travel and stop airline travel, and the Democrats called him a racist for doing it. Yeah. Do you, th do you foresee the, the administration per maybe pushing more restrictions, further restrictions, if the outbreak uh, continues to spread. I think that there was one reported case now in Indiana. If the outbreak continues to spread, what all is what all is the administration prepared to do to to keep that contained? Well, the president's been very clear. He's looking at every scenario, and first and foremost, he's going to put the health and safety of the American people first. So, mm -hmm. when the stock market initially dropped, I saw him being interviewed, and they said, "Well, what are you going to do about the stock market?" He said, "The stock market will work itself out, but we need to make sure we're taking care of the health and safety of the American people." So, you saw Vice President Pence in Washington State, that's been hit the hardest with Governor Inslee. Uh, you know, they had a great meeting, and that's what they should be doing: bipartisan, a Democrat governor with the vice president, working with the governors, getting the kits into the states, making sure uh, we're we're able to produce enough of these testing kits and then giving the American people the information they need. But we'll have to see as this virus continues uh, what's going to happen. But I guarantee you the government and this president is going to take every precaution nece necessary for the safety of the American people. Yeah, and and I know everyone, uh, uh, people are, are grateful for that. And I think it's nice to just have someone in the White House who is not hysterically overreacting and then while also playing identity politics with an issue that, you know, people are concerned about. They have questions about it. Uh, if it's not that, then it's I the, the last thing I have to ask you about. I really liked how he answered, and so did everyone in our radio audience, how he answered the question that was posed to him at the town hall last night as it relates to Elizabeth Warren and whether or not it was because she's a female that that's why, I guess they forgot about Tulsi Gabbard, that's why she's she was uh, not successful in the uh, Democrat primary. And I, I think that he really hit it. He's nice and he enjoys clearly whether people like him as a politician or not, he clearly enjoys going out and talking to people and doing all these rallies. I don't know any other president that's done rallies like this. There's, th I mean, that's a huge difference there compared to her trying to enjoy a beer awkwardly in her kitchen and it didn't work out. <laughs> You know, you, we, we've been around, I've been around politics a long time, and there are these contrived politicians that do these, you know, stage things. Elizabeth Warren is the epitome of that. That's why she lost. It wasn't because there was sexism. She was a bad candidate, as the president said. But the president's authentic, and I travel a lot with him. As people come to him to tell them their stories, he wants to hear it. He's genu genuinely interested in every person he meets. He loves hearing their story. He loves hearing their issues. There's nothing contrived about him. You can be a, a, a Donald Trump supporter or somebody who doesn't support him. 
but you know there's nothing contrived. He is who he is, and I think that's so refreshing. I watched him on that stage last night, and I thought, how are, are Biden or Bernie going to go up against this? Because yeah. he's just so comfortable and so good and uh, and just so well able to, able to communicate so well with the American people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think Warren is going to do you think she'll endorse Biden or or do you think she'll get behind Bernie? I don't think she's going to endorse Bernie. I just don't. I, you know, I, part of me thinks that she and Biden, she stayed in for Super Tuesday. So she mm-hmm. can help Biden. I really do. I think she's not liked Bernie. There's been, um, you know, bad feelings there. It's been very clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, she stayed out of the 2016 primary. She didn't endorse in 2016 until Hillary clinched the nomination. I could see her staying on the sidelines, but I wouldn't be surprised if she supports Biden if uh, if he offers her something in his administration that he's never going to get because we're going to beat him. But if he makes some <laughs> type of offer and overture, well, he might forget he's running in that one though. So it, it might be he might <laughs> he might think it's the he's. I cannot wait for the debate, and I know a lot of other people are are excited to because I think I think the president will do well. Ronna McDaniel, always such a pleasure to talk with you, and uh, appreciate what you do and your strong voice out there. Thank you so much for joining us.